Hi, this is Randall with Carter Hill Honey Bees. Today's Monday, August 2nd, 2021. Over the weekend, we finished up our extracting process and we've got all of our honey we're gonna get for 2021 in here. And today, I'll, I'll kind of show you what we got. I think we've got somewhere between 290 and 300 gallon of honey. And we're about to start the uh, bottling process. We kind of have to transition the building over from harvest and extracting to bottling. So we kind of have to move stuff around a little bit. I'll kind of show you what we, how things look a little bit different from when we extract. So right there is our uncapping tank and the extractor. There's probably about three gallon of honey still in there. These are my two 100 gallon tanks. They both probably have around 95 gallon in each one. And then that 40 gallon tank there is full. And this one here is about half full. So there's probably around 20 gallon in there. And I have right at four gallon of honey of each one of them five gallon buckets. There's 10 of them, I believe. So there's right at 40 gallon here in the five gallon buckets. Now here's where I, I was talking about earlier. Notice the use, how I use the queen excluders. We wash our jars in vinegar water and let them air dry overnight. The dehumidifier greatly sped up the drying process. There was, every one of these jars was dry, no drip of water inside or nothing around lunch today. I can do uh, about 30, 32 cases at a time like this. And then we have another place here where we stack our supers and we've done reboxed some of these quarts. And we're about to start the bottling process either this evening or tomorrow when we get off from work. Took us a lot longer than normal this year because of the rain um, and plus the dehydration process in here, which I'm glad I've done. We're gonna check the moisture here in just a minute and see where the honey's at. But uh, I've, I'm really glad I got the dehumidifier this year. I think it's making a difference in the honey. I think we're gonna be well satisfied with our honey uh, moisture. So here's something brand new. I just literally got food putting together and I'm actually warming the water up in it. A, a Max Ant 42 gallon uh, honey bottling tank. And I'm pretty excited about this. I've seen a couple of guys use this lift from Harbor Freight on here. And I got the same thing except I made a little platform. I didn't particularly like the way it sat on the edges. So I basically made a little stage for it to sit on. And then my wife, uh, she don't like to hold a bottle in bottle, so I put her little shaft down here, and the bottle will fit under there perfectly. And when I when I bottle, I don't I don't like the shelf. It gets in my way, so I can bottle it the way I like. So I guess you could call this a his and her bottling setup here. But this will make her this will make my wife real happy. And I wanted to show you this right here uh, on a rafter in here. I wrote down the gallons of honey in which I've processed since the very beginning of my beekeeping career. And I think if you had those numbers up, I'm just trying to remember, I think that's about 2,200 gallons that I've harvested since I started. And this year's should put me around 2,500 total since I started in 2007. And the way I tally it up is I, I numerically number my cases every year and then I have one pound squeeze bottle. So when we get through at the end of the year and I, I have them wrote down in a notebook and I check them off, then I know pretty much precisely how much honey I got. But like I say, probably 290 to 300 gallons is what I'm gonna wind up with. So now I'm gonna set up here and uh, I just measured these buckets up a day ago, so I'm going to get a sample of honey out of there and check the moisture first. And then I'll get a sample of honey out of the top of the tank and check it and see where the honey moisture is. And I always do this every year prior to bottling because I want to know what it is. I don't want to put out any honey that's too wet with moisture. It don't taste as good and it runs a risk of fermentation, which uh, in my opinion, that can destroy a lot of years of hard work building up your customer base. This is kind of a quality control thing that I want to be sure that I'm giving my customers a, a good quality product of honey. So I got my first sample prepared. I just got through calibrating the Atigo refractometer. So now I'm gonna check the moisture. I've got honey in there. 
and right there we go 16.6 percent and that's exactly what i'm looking for that's that's perfect and considering that it tested 18 percent when i took it off or some of it did i didn't sample each pull but that's a that's exactly the moisture i want so i'll, I'll clean this out and then we'll get a sample from the top of the tank and we'll see if there's a difference all right i got a sample out of the top of one of the 100 gallon tanks so let's see what it does i cleaned out the existing honey used water and cleaned it up so i won't contaminate this sample so let's see what we got Fifteen point seven. So actually, it's a little drier up top, and that's probably the dehumidifier. The humidity today in here is around twenty nine, thirty percent. So very well pleased, and I can taste the difference in that honey with that moisture that much lower. Now this will be the driest I've ever bottled honey. I, it's usually around seventeen and a half percent when I bottle it. So this is going to be really good. Well, appreciate you for joining me for this video today, and we'll see you next time.